What is up, everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert, here with Dan Hardy from Hardy Fence, Yates Center, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Dan and I actually just got done recording the interview of his story, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. We talk about, of course, the story, the journey, uh, a new exciting venture uh, in your future, and um, we also get into a little bit of the, the circle of professionals that are always beneficial to kind of surround your business with. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, I think you're going to really enjoy the interview. So without further ado, let's get into it. Then first and foremost, I appreciate you being so giving of your time. Uh, if you don't mind, share with us your fence story. Of course. So um, as a kid, I, I always wanted to be a carpenter. Um, my grandpa was a carpenter in our, our community um, that I grew up in. You know, he built like the Pizza Hut, the oh. nursing homes, you know, several houses around. So growing up, I always saw evidence of, of his work, you know. And um, so I, I thought that's what I would be. And then, um, you know, I didn't go to college, but um, after high school, I just, you know, bounced from job to job for a little while and then um, came onto an opportunity um, in an oil and gas um, position. And that led to a 10 year career in oil and gas. Nice. Um, everything from, you know, in the field to um, in distribution, uh, manufacturing, everything in between. And oil and gas is such a roller coaster. Um, I was laid off three times within that, that 10 years. And after the last time, um, decided it was time to do something different, you know, and it was difficult because we we had just bought um let's see about a year and three months before we'd bought a house in the country mm -hmm. um so you know there's the mortgage there's yep. there's three kids that i need to feed um you know the bills of course and and um but i knew in in my heart that i had to do something different um i i worked for a company who uh they didn't value people for, for who they were. You know, they, we sure. were just, um, we were just a means to, yeah. to an end. Worker you know? one, worker two, that sort yep. of thing. So when I got let go, it was it was the biggest relief, um, yeah. you know. And so, you know, there was some peace with with being laid off. And in that time frame, um, well, the Thanksgiving before our barn had burnt down, and. Um, we had some contractors rebuilding the barn in a completely different spot. So um, during that time when I was laid off, uh, my wife Sarah and I, we were building some um, really bad ag fence from, <laughs> you know, where the old barn was over to the new barn. And um, after the guys had finished working for the day, um, we were having a beer and joking around. And, you know, I said, why don't you just start a fence company, you know? And um, so about two weeks later, we had a fence company. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did very little market research, but, you know, just um, I built a few fences at um, our, our old house in, in town. And um, looking back now, those fences are pitiful. Um, I'm pretty embarrassed, you know, <laughs> and I'd, I'd like to go redo them. But if given the opportunity, yeah. you know, but uh no, it, it started a really special journey because um, at the time we, we were going to church with a guy who I kind of latched on to as my business mentor. You know, I knew that he had um, taken over a family business and um, sold it, you know, for, um, you know, and he, he just didn't have to work anymore, hmm. you know. So, well, this guy knows something. Yeah. Um, so... And one thing that he told me was to join the foremost trade association um, okay. for our industry. And so um, AFA was what I found to be um, that trade association. So we, we joined and um, just so happened there was a meeting down in Ponca City. Um, let's see, not two weeks after we joined. So um, Sarah and I drove down to Ponca City and it... It was a retirement party for um, a longtime member, actually, and and so um, I've always been eager to get involved and and um, you know in whatever I'm doing. So 
and being new to the industry and new to the this this uh, community, um, you know, they were at the time they were looking for um, volunteers to help with this chapter project. They were wanting to build these uh, storage crates for AFA University. So when they and they still use those crates today. Yeah. But uh, you know, so I raised my hand and I was like, well, we're kind of central to the chapter. You know, we can we could build them in our place. You know, and have everybody meet there. And and so we did. And uh, it was really cool, you know, the, the chapter president at the time was Barry Baker, who, um, you know, I looked him up while we were there, and he's just over in Wichita, and I thought, oh, this guy's going to be a competitor, <laughs> you know, we're not going to get along at all. Um, he's one of my best friends yeah. now, you know, in yeah. the industry. Um, one of those guys that I could call at any time and, you know, with any question, and, and uh, he's, just, he's just been there for us. Yeah. Um, but, you know, him and, and several others, um, when the day came to do this, this uh, chapter project, they, they surprised us with a welcome to the fence industry gift package, you know. Oh. So there was a brand new Jackson wheelbarrow and a couple pull jacks and, um, oh, um, one of those sump pumps, you know, for... yeah. Yeah, um, a hand pump for getting water out of the hole. Yep. Just stuff that a new fence guy has no clue that you need. Sure. You know? Sure. But the pull jack, you know, especially, that, that put us years ahead of what we were doing <laughs> to yeah. begin with. You know, two by fours bolted together uh -huh. with a, uh -huh. a, you know, a chain and a come along to the hitch of the truck. <laughs> you know, having to move the truck. Our first chain link job was a, I mean, it's still standing today. Sure. It looks fine, but getting it done was you know i think like 100 feet and it took us four days wow you know six foot tall chain link just because we just didn't know any better we were mixing yeah. mixing concrete you know with our one man auger in a five gallon bucket you know yeah just, yeah um i mean we we just faked it till we made it yeah you know really sure. learned quickly but you know that was uh really important getting involved with the AFA and and making those connections you know because we were able to bounce things off of them this is what we're doing mm -hmm. um well that's wrong you know or <laughs> or you could do that a lot better yeah if you just do this and yeah. and so um you know and we've had a lot of ups and downs along the way we've we've um, increased our revenue every year since since we first started um you know, we just recently moved into some commercial space yep. in town. We were on our, our property um, for the first five years. Sure. And um, I got tired of walking out the back door and being at work, you know, and <laughs> yeah. when it's right there, it's hard to clock out. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and so that's been the goal to get into commercial space and, and start expanding. And, and so um, I guess looking back, we hired our first full-time employee in um, July of 19. So we started in um, March of 16. Okay. And it was my wife and I um, until about October. She had some health issues and just couldn't help anymore. So it was mostly me and um, just, you know, whoever I could find sure. to help. You know, my, I enlisted my father-in-law one time and I remember uh, <laughs> I took him to Parsons which is about 45 minutes from where we were um, on a project and we were nailing well screwing pickets you know we were still using deck screws sure and uh, so I, I tell him kind of what to do you know and I, I tell him I'm gonna go over here and um, you know we're both hanging pickets and um, and so I get him started I hand him a level and I come back about 30 minutes later and um, the pickets, you know, they started out level. He never touched the level. Oh, no. So, so they ended up, you know, walking, and he's got them like this, and <laughs> we got to take all those off yeah. and start over. So, you know, and kind of hurt his pride, but, um, you know, but it's just a learning process. Sure, you know? sure. And, um, and then just deciding when's the right time to hire, you know, yeah. getting past the fear of, um, you know, I'm making this commitment to this person that I can pay them every week. Yeah. You know, yeah. When at the time, you know, we were living from deposit 
check the deposit check, sure. you know, and I hate to admit it, but sometimes we would use the next deposit check to, or, you know, we'd, we'd get paid for um, finishing a job and use that money to replace money that we'd already received from a deposit and spent to pay for materials on the next job, yeah. you know, and making excuses on why we're not there yet. Sure. You know? Sure. You know, lead times, you know, stuff's back ordered and, yeah. um, but I mean, it's, it, <laughs> it hurts, but you know, that's, that's part of the struggle of starting a company from scratch. Yeah. You know, is, yeah. Um, it's not, it's not easy. It's not gonna, you know, it's not always just gonna work out from day one and, and, um, you know, so it's, it's normal, I think for struggles like that. But as long as you, um, pick yourself up and, and ask for help when needed and just know that you're not in it alone. Um, you know, so we hired that first, um, full-time employee in summer of 19 and, and, uh, sent him through AFA university, nice. um, fence installation school. At the same time, I was taking the certified fence contractor uh, classes, and and then COVID hit, <laughs> and um, you know he got iffy about the future of our company, and he ended up going to a different company. Not you know three months after mm. investing in sending him to AFA University, and we were paying him really well, and so that was a big blow. Sure. You know, and, and then uh, we'd already committed to hire this other guy for the spring, and so I went ahead and did that, and um, and he's still with me. You nice. know, he's been he's he's my my rock. You know, he's he's the guy that um, I can I just don't worry about. You know, sure. now I can trust with anything, and um, and then we hired another guy um, November of twenty, and it was soon after that that. Um, I started to realize that, you know, these guys are capable of doing this work without me. Yeah. And, and now, um, when I help them, I feel like I'm more in the way <laughs> than anything. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, they know what the outcome is supposed to be and they know how to get there and they have all the tools, the knowledge, the experience, they just might go at it a slightly different way Sure. that sure. I would just do it a little bit differently. Yeah. And so if I'm on site, and I see that, then I question it, and everything stops, and they're wondering, well, do we do it his way, <laughs> or do we do it the way that we normally do, you know? Yeah. And, and so I'm, it's, it's really strange being at this, this juncture, you know, being, uh, I'm, I'm probably only in the field maybe 5% of the time now. Sure, sure. And, um, and we have this building, and, um, and now we just started a supply company a couple weeks ago, yep. which yep. you know, yeah. and trying to navigate what that's going to look like. And, sure. and so, you know, we know based on um, estimated revenue for the fence industry last year that we, we should, we have about 10% of our, our market um, share. And so um, moving forward, we, we don't want to, um, try to capture more than maybe another 5% of the install side. But in the future, you know, if, if things slow down, I don't want to be fighting for 30% or more, right. you know, so right. with the supply side of things, we're, we're hoping to continue, which we've already started, but continue building relationships with other contractors in the area and, sure. um, you know, just try to promote education, what tools to use, yep. what materials to use. Um, cause it's a, it's a pressure treated market yeah. and, you know, we, we take out fences all the time that have failed in sure. 10 years or less, you know, and, um, just trying to elevate the industry in our, in our market. And that's about it for the story. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> so a couple questions, mm -hmm. what advice would you give knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to someone that you know, is either just starting out or maybe still has the full-time job doing it on the side mm -hmm. contemplating make it making this their full-time profession so first and foremost get a really good accountant 
Yeah. Um, I learned that kind of the hard way, you know, which we finally do have a good accountant and I just don't have to worry about it anymore. Yep. But um, that was an expensive lesson. Sure. You know, um, just by having the wrong accountant, like not doing anything wrong per se, just just not having somebody who is asking the right questions. Like, okay. um, you know, we just handed in our our stuff and they gave us a, a return, you know, with yep. a big IRS bill, you know, and and um, when we asked what we were doing wrong, so nothing, you're doing fine, you know. Hmm. They didn't want to talk about, which now I know, you know, you need to be, they need to be asking questions like, um, what are your assets? Um, I want to hear, you know, hey, you need to, you need to spend twenty thousand dollars by the end of the year. You yeah, know, or just things like that. Things yeah. that um, guidance. Yeah, yeah, more guidance. Which, um, so that's that's really important True. out of the gate, I think. But um, beyond that, um, don't be afraid to hire. You know, yeah, because yeah. it's it's really hard to do it by yourself. You know, everything from going to look at projects, estimates, ordering material, building the project. Um, if you can find people that you trust and pay them well, um, and know that they'll do a good job, yeah, you know, it pays off. Sure, sure. So, so talking then about you know the accountant being important, a good accountant being important to your team. What other professions are important to you and your team and your business? So we have, um, which Dylan, our main guy, his, his wife is our marketing director. Okay. Um, and it's, it's really important to us to have a good website, mm -hmm. um, you know, a Google listing that has all the right information, yep. um, photos, you know, promote, um, getting reviews from customers, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Facebook page. Sure. Um, so I'd say marketing, you know, focus on your brand, your culture, um, try to attract, you know, be attractive to people who are looking for a job yeah. or looking for a contractor so that they, they've already done the legwork. Um, they have vetted you before you even show up. And what we find is anymore, um, we don't compete on a lot of projects yeah. because they've, they've looked through the Google, you know, they'll search fence Southeast Kansas or whatever. And they'll look at the, the first page of results and we're, you know, like half that page sure. of results. Nice. And then the other people don't have a website. Maybe they have a Google listing. Um, maybe the phone number doesn't work no. anymore. Um, so in our area, you know, we've, we're the only one that really um, has a good website, has an accurate, up-to-date, robust Google listing yep. um, that pays for ads, you know. Sure, sure. $200 a month, and it makes sure that we're right there at the top. Nice. You know? So besides accounting, though, what, what professions would you say are important for a new, new or up, or future fencing contractor to reach out to. The accountant's an important one. So for us, it was a good lawyer, mm. right? So that could uh, look at our contract and give us advice on they would include this, they wouldn't include that, that sort of thing. Um, okay. And then a banker's usually a good one to at least have a relationship with. Um, the worst time to find a banker is when you need a banker. Mm -hmm. So. You know, in our business, that's, that's kind of what I call our holy trinity. The accountant, the lawyer, and the banker. Mm -hmm. and, and you shouldn't need them all at the same time. Right. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. you know, do you find that to be the case in your guys' situation? Or yeah. is there anything you would add to Definitely. that? You know, we haven't needed a lawyer, thankfully. Yeah. Um, we did build fence on a few different occasions for a lawyer. Sure. And he's... Our lawyer, yeah. I guess by default, you know, yeah. but um, I've not had to pay him for anything, you know, mm -hmm. thankfully. But um, and then our banker, we've we've dealt with the same guy since like 2007, nice. you know. So nice. that's, that's long term relationship. Nice. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, 
So he's, uh, of course, he was a little skeptical at first of what we wanted to do. And, sure. But anymore, you know, he, he trusts us. He can see the numbers. Um, you know, he believes in our, our vision and, and what we plan to do. Excellent. So, Excellent. Well, then, in closing, the last question I, I generally ask is your success. How much of it would you attribute to hard work, perseverance, dedication, and how much of it would you attribute to luck? Well, heavily on the side of hard work, dedication, yeah. and yeah, I don't know that there's much luck involved. Sure. Really at sure. all. Yeah. I don't know. Our market's pretty unique, you know, in mm -hmm. some ways. Mm -hmm. Really rural, you know. I don't. Yeah. We don't have to compete with the the big fence companies in the city so much, but um, but still takes a lot of effort to build that brand recognition and reputation and um, and get to where we are. Absolutely, so absolutely. I'm well, Dan, thankful. I appreciate your time. Really, and I appreciate you sharing your story. Yeah, um, guys. For now, mm -hmm. I'm Joe, and this is Dan. Thank and you we're guys. reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And we'll see you next time.